I might be wearing makeup, but I can throw a fastball by you at the same time. Ginny Finch, you are listening to The Real Estate Investor Show, episode number 20. Welcome, ladies, to The Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. We're excited to have Linda Libertori on today's show. She's a best-selling author and recently released her second book, My Landlord Helper. Her company, Secure Pay One, is the winner of the 2017 Property Manager of the Year Award. On today's episode, we talk about all things related to technology and managing your rental properties, the number one tip to help you determine the right software to manage your rentals, and ways you might be underutilizing tools like DocuSign. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz on the Real Estate Investor Show, and I'm with my amazing co-host. Hello, everybody. This is Andressa. So how's it going, Miss Andressa? We're back for another exciting episode. I feel like the women on this show that we interview are just amazing women. I just want to get them all in a room and just have, you know, a weekly connection with them. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I'm so inspired by them, and I'm truly curious, interesting, knowing them and, and knowing what they're up to. I want to share something with you that it has something, it has a lot actually to do with our interview today. Uh, sometimes I, I hear a lot, I'm feeling very overwhelmed with kids, with, you know, spouse, partner, dog, cats, or whatever women have <laughs> in our lives, right? And I was like, I am on the same boat. So how can I you know, gain time? How can I save time? How can I carve time and still, you know, get things done? And one way that I was thinking is, is that I need to feed my mind constantly. And, but I don't have, or better saying, I choose do not, I choose to do not sit down and read books because I think that, um, I'm not wasting time, but I could be doing something else. So, Thank goodness for people who invented audiobook <laughs> and all other technologies that are out there. And I can be driving and listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook, being at a grocery store and still feeding my mind and getting that information in while doing things that I don't need to think actually while I'm doing. Yeah. And, and this is something that is being extremely helpful for me. I still gather all the knowledge from the books and podcasts and can get things done. So I just wanted to, to share something. And I think that Linda today, she's going to give me more tips. How can, I, <laughs> how can I add more technology in yes. my life in order yes. to you know, carve more time? So I'm super excited about this episode. Yeah. And you raise a good point. If we don't feed our minds, no one's going to do that for us. Just like going to the gym. Wouldn't it be nice if somebody literally took my body and brought it to the gym? It's just not going to, not going to happen. So that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. Right. We could, we should, that's the next business we could invent. That's not a bad idea. No, but you have to do it yourself. So, so ladies listening, just keep feeding your mind and you know, one thing you can listen to or read a day, just a short time, even five, 10 minutes, just feed that mind. Cause yeah. No one's going to do it for you. So we want to welcome Linda to our show. Welcome, Linda. Oh, I'm so honored to be here. You guys put out uh, such a great service. It, it really is, like you said, for women, for anybody to listen and grow with knowledge. I, I'm all for you. I, I, read, I you know, totally concur with everything you're saying about, you know, you've got to find those spots here and there. Yeah, absolutely. And Linda's background is, is really fascinating. Uh, she's going to get into a lot of her, um, her business and how she's helping landlords and with technology and all those sort of things. But I, I love, you know, we love to start with our guests to kind of hear your, your background, not just a bio, but like what compelled you to, you know, focus on helping landlords and, and helping, uh, you know, with the, on the property management side, but also the technology side. So how did you get into real estate investing? Well, I, real estate investing, actually, I would say I had a mentor that um, she was uh, actually a very unique situation. She was a stay at home mom and she had her third child was uh, actually, I take that back her second child um, was born with cerebral palsy. So it, it kind of shaped her life. 
it shaped her into real estate investing. It shaped her into, um, you know, a lot of things that weren't available back then. Then he's fully handicapped. And um, so she had to do a lot. She went into education, special ed, and she started real estate investing. And she was a big proponent of real estate investing. And of course, technology played such a huge role. Today, he is, and, and I really can get choked up telling you, but he is a graduate not only of college, he's working uh, for the federal government. He is a graduate of law school, and he is also a real estate investor. And wow. yet, he's fully, you know, so <laughs> just awesome. amazing things. And she, talk about networking. She is an amazing story. She made connections with the um, admissions officer, made friends with them. She knew what to do prior to, you know, just networking 101, right? How to get her son through law school. And, uh, you know, he had to be read the things. He, he has only use of like one finger. So, mm. I mean, it's just really super amazing. So audible programs that weren't available. And this is all 20 years ago. So wow. like what we take for granted for now, she had to fight for each thing, you know. Mm. But she's, her, she's Rosa Parks, you know, for what she did for her mm. son. And for people with disabilities through the college, you know. So I'm sorry. Anyway, that's off the subject, but it is how I got into real estate investing. And I worked with her, um, you know, part time, helping her with technology. I was raising a family. Um, she was always looking for technology solutions to make her business run better. Um, fast forward, I ended up uh, working for a web-based application startup out of New York that collected money, New York City. And um, I kind of, you know, the light bulb went off and I was like, oh, you know, this would work really good for investors because part of the thing was this collection company was doing ACH payments. And again, kind of, not that it was unheard of 10 years ago, just not readily adapted by people. And it became um, really good for, in this case, it was for private schools. And it became really important because you don't realize how many people, I'll say, don't pay tuition or put the schools, I'll say, in somewhat of an awkward position. And so when I say private schools, I should mention is K through 12. So where most of us would assume everybody's paying their tuition, it, it doesn't really roll that way. So they had the same problem, I'll say, as a landlord would have. You get into these interpersonal stories, and that's very difficult. And so they, they were a third-party solution. And I just kind of had this light bulb like, wow, I think the landlord's smaller, um, or as well as large, uh, could use this, I'll call it intervention. <laughs> and that's how we got started. And, and what's your, tell me, tell the audience, because you and I, I had the, um, uh, you know, I was appreciative of the, the, you know, introduction you gave to me about your business, but tell us a little about what, how you help landlords. So, cause I think it's unique and then we can get into like the technology that, that you're supporting them around. Sure. Sure. So what we do for a landlord is um, I'll call it a unique, it is definitely a niche. It's not full service. So we are not a full service property manager. So we assist people that want to manage their own property and we, provide for them, I'll call it kind of the, we facilitate all their maintenance requests, all the communications period. So whether that's maintenance or lease renewal or collecting of the rent or give me something else, inspections that come up. So all those things, but we're facilitate, facilitating it for their own staff. Um, so in other words, it's their maintenance staff that's going to go out. So we're not changing their process. We're just plugging into their process. And then I'll say improving it by the use of technology, by the use of making sure the cash is flowing. That You know, I hear back, I would almost say I could better tell you what a good job we do by hearing the stories of what people tell us. And so like something as simple as um, they'll get a housing client. And the housing will be, let's just say, 800 housing and 200 that comes from the resident. And as they get busy and as they grow, um, when they're doing it on their own, that 200 becomes un unimportant. And then, like, then they'll come back to me and they'll be like, you won't believe this, but they owe 1600 I need your help. You know, I, I let it go. I was at the auctions. I was doing the rehabs. You know, if they're in a growth mode, that's most commonly when they come to us. We wouldn't be really a solution for somebody like full service where they want to 
go off to the islands and they're done now with their portfolio. So really when you're trying to grow, you need some help and you need almost a partner and that's kind of what we provide that partnership to help you facilitate things. Great. And tell me a little bit about the types of properties that you guys are focusing on. Single families, multis, or, or apartment complexes. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? Um, you know, it, it's funny because it's not the types of properties that we focus on. I would say it's more the type of landlord that okay. really fits our mold. So we, we have um, single family, we have multifamily, and we have some small commercial strip malls. So the, the kind of common theme that, you know, now it's eight years, so we look back and we try to figure out like, what is the common thread between these people. I would say that they like to do it themselves. They're not about ready to give it up to anybody. Um, they, want to, they want a measure of control, a measure of input, so they have a voice in everything we're doing each day. So we really, it's almost like we work for them as opposed to taking it off of the burden off of them. We're working for them by lightening their load, I guess I'd say. You know, it's interesting what you're saying, Linda, because we talk a lot about obviously self-managing, right? So there's people who are managing their own properties. Right. Then you have the other version of managing, hiring a third-party manager, which, right. which Jess and I have chatted with a different guest on and just, you know, getting into that whole discussion. What you're actually saying is almost like a hybrid model, right? In between the two. So it's not quite doing it yourself. It's not quite handing it over. It's in the middle of somewhere. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a you know, person listening to this, you know, we do have some men listening, but most of our, our, our audience is women. So we'll just put that out there. But hey, you know, we don't want to discriminate. But, you know, a woman listening to this, how do I determine the right choice for me? So, you know, I might, let's, let's take the woman who's got a, a portfolio, okay? Let's use that as an example. You know, there's a lot of, so, so now I'm given, given, given a third option, right? Not, not just managing it myself or hiring a third-party manager or even transitioning to that. Now, there's a third, a third choice, which you're speaking of, Linda, around, you know, almost like a hybrid model. You know, I'm listening to this. I'm getting overwhelmed with information. How do I look at my current portfolio and determine which path to take? Or what's the right path for me? What would you say to that? Well, I'd say you'd have to be somebody, again, that wants to stay involved. Um, you do need to have some maintenance team. Now, I can give you a couple examples, and I don't want to make your audience all confused, but let's just say I have some very small landlords. Let's start with that example, that she has a three flat. Uh, she came to me a few years back, and she's looking to grow her portfolio, and she tried full service, and it just did not work for her. Um, she was put in, it might've been who she chose, um, but they were, um, she was put into like more of a commercial system where things happen on a certain date. And that's really became kind of, I'll call it the problem for her and why she had to move off of it. She didn't like kind of the institutionalized things happen this date. This is a, you know, and then of course there is an upcharge for their maintenance. And, and I'll say rightfully so. Anybody you know that's a property manager, there, there's a reason that they do that. There's a lot of effort that goes into it. So I have nothing bad to say, you know, about property management. It's really your interview process and making sure it's a fit. So she came to us because she was a little frustrated with that. Um, so she, she has her own maintenance companies. I'll say she's small, so she doesn't have a maintenance staff, but she has somebody she can depend on for her you know, that we, we contact. So the calls come to us. So what was hurting her was, I'll call it a big heart. She's actually a classic case of the big heart where <clears throat> the um, tenants were getting behind. They were starting to, I'm going to just use the term and, um, and she, we've, I, her and I have said it, you know, it's like they lost respect for her. Um, they were running the show and she wasn't, you know? And so you know, do people set out to do that? No, she's a strong, wonderful woman. And I would just tell you it happens. And I know sometimes a new person can't envision it happening, but it does. And so she would tell you that what we did was professionalize it. We send invoices. If it's a money order community, they're getting an invoice from us. They're getting a return envelope. That's like, I don't know. I'll, I'll call it a visual thing with people that they realize this is a, I'll call it a real company and a real bill that's due. 
Um, sometimes mm. not everybody has the best financial literacy when it comes to the priority of their bills. And so this kind of, I'll say feeds that. We feed that where a small landlord isn't going to take the time to do that. Um, being on our system or anybody's system at this point, they get an automatic email reminder. We do text reminders. So it just takes a relationship that's kind of one-on-one -on -one and, and inserts something in the middle to make it, I'll call it, more real to the tenant, you know. So what you're saying, too, is, you know, just to, just to follow up on that is, I like the word you said, professionalize it. So regardless of which kind of avenue, you know, a person takes, right, whether they decide to manage it themselves um, hire, hire a, a company like yourselves that where they're helping in some ways or just go, go full service, third party management, regardless, you have to professionalize it. I think that's a really good key and takeaway. Like how does anyone listening to this, if you have a portfolio, what else can you be doing to professionally upgrade your company and your property management? Right. I, I would agree completely because that when we talk about the heart, like it, it's really, I, 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 I hesitate to say because I don't want to sound heartless, but it, it just doesn't belong in that relationship. If you're going to go out on Friday night, please don't call your tenant. You know, I, I mean, it's just, I know I've heard people tell stories Well, we really got along. We did this, we did that. I, I, for me, that's like mixing. That just doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, and you know, you know, your own relationships with your own friends, things happen and you were like, why did Liz say that? I wonder why she said that to me. And I can't get it out of my mind, you know? And, and now when you're talking about a professional relationship that you get to need to get paid on the same day each month, you don't want that to enter into it, you know? Well, one quick story that I can share. We, we've managed properties for about 10 years and we were doing everything at the beginning. And I can remember we had someone moved into one of our um, fourplex and he, uh, he was handy. So what he said to us was, hey, I don't, let's make an arrangement. I don't have to pay the rent, but in lieu of that, I'll start working on your, your building. So this is like maybe like two years into our, 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 uh, our business. So Matt and I looked at each other we're like, that's awesome. So uh, you know, <laughs> I know the people listening to this are laughing to themselves. Yeah. We thought it was a great idea. And you know, I don't have to tell you fast forward. It was just like a disaster after disaster. Not only was he not capable of fixing what he said he was going to fix, but it, it was a really bad idea to incorporate all of that into one kind of transaction. So, you know, I, I encourage folks listening to this, you're going to meet people and tenants who actually could help you or, you know, that's great, but separate them. And we right. should have done, which, you know, is kind of sort of obvious as I'm, as I'm saying it, you know, no, no, <laughs> at listen. the time I'm like, this is a great idea. And him and I were like, what are we thinking? <laughs> it, it, I still hear it all the time. I go to so many conferences, you know, I'm with Think Realty and I still hear stories like that all the time. Like, to me, that's like clear, again, as the outside professional, make him make an invoice. Like you just think of all the runaway things. How many hours yeah. is he putting in? Right, of course. How quickly is he, <laughs> how quickly does he respond? You know, I've, I've gone through with landlords where they able to upgrade uh, along the way their maintenance team. Mm -hmm. we, we had ones where literally he'd finish the work and he'd be like, okay, I need to get, who do I get this invoice to? And it was just such a, like a train wreck. Now that man has grown from 30 units to 200. And of course he's upgraded that maintenance man. But, you know, if you've got a maintenance man that can't, you know, have dinner Friday night because you didn't pay him, th there's a problem. You know what I mean? Like, and, and maintenance, I really feel, quite frankly, is the hardest slot to fill. So I don't blame you at all for jumping on that and going, oh, this will help. You know, this will relieve some of our time. And so that's your first reaction. You didn't just think through the business process. Right. right. Linda, I, I'm very curious to know, how do you build a relationship with your clients? Uh, it, it seems to me the hybrid, let's call hybrid. Just like yes. we, we yes. totally yes. name it. I know. Is it, yeah. is it okay? Yeah. So the hybrid model, um, what I'm seeing is that there is a, a more of a partnership, right? Yeah. And how do you determine what is your role? What is their role? Is it a custom or you have specific tasks that there's no, there, it, they're no negotiable? 
Uh, right. I would say it's it's pretty specific. I mean, obviously, over the years, it, it's definitely evolved. I mean, truly, if you want to go back in time all the way back, um, we did not think we would be taking any calls. So we just thought we were going to be collecting money. And, and, and for, if you really want to laugh, um, <laughs> like Liz, I have my own story. I thought I'd be collecting all, all electronically 10 years ago. Like I didn't even... Uh, I kind of stepped back, I'll call it, in time to come into the real estate world where there was still checks. And and that the first people were like, you're not getting my checkbook number. You know what I mean? Like, you're, yeah. no, oh no, you know. <laughs> and I was like, well, I have it because I have the check. <laughs> you know, you know but, that I have it, right? <laughs> right, right. You understand. I do know it, but, but whatever, it, you know. So, yeah, so then it did turn into the calls, the inspections. So now, our agreement does list everything. I would say there's a couple of things we don't do and that we always point that out, that we don't pay your bills and uh, we're not leasing agents, which I consider the obvious because we work nationwide. So you definitely, either you like to do that yourself, which some people don't want to give that up, or they're using a local leasing agent and then it comes to us. And then from there on in, I would say we are totally in charge of I'll, I'll say communication. So their 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 um, plate is emptied of all that. But um, and you, you often hear this. You know, people use that expression. Oh, I have to manage the manager. Well, in our case, because it's a relationship, you're hearing from us constantly. Where I just had a man the other day. He said I call them. They never call me back. I, I go, well, we're a little different than that. You might get a little annoyed with us. But we're kind of not making a move. So just figured if you hired a secretary, a uh, admin, whatever in your office to do the work with you, that I is, would say is we're the equivalent of. So that person, especially at the beginning, you're not going to want them to make a move without your approval. Yeah. And I would say that's the role we take. Obviously, with some of our clients have been with us really long term now. Um, at, at a certain point, if I call and say, should I send this maintenance man? Or And we won't, mostly don't call. We mostly email. But if I said that, Liz would look at me like, really, Linda? You need to know. You know I mean, it's yeah. the same, same maintenance man we've got for, the, you know, we've had for the last five years. Why would you ask me that? Sure. So yeah, at some point. But um, we document everything. Like we, we're, I would say we're ahead of our time with that. Like now that's all you hear about at conferences and if you've ever been to a court. <laughs> but we, because of the role we play, we need Liz to trust us completely. I'm using you as my sample landlord. Liz is <laughs> the sample landlord. Um, we need her to trust us completely. So, you know, the time, date, stamp of everything we do is on there. Um, sometimes we surface problems for a landlord that they might be having with maintenance that's not reacting quick enough. Um, we're not intentionally doing that, but it, you know, just based on the nature of us, we we receive the call, we copy and paste everything, put it into the notes, and if the maintenance isn't replying, you know, so yes, it we're very transparent, very much a partnership, and we pretty much. I can't think of anything we don't do except for we don't pay the bills, um, we don't do the screening, you know, so that's part of the leasing agent. We have at random times, we don't do too much on the outgoing. So we at random times we've helped somebody, but they understand that I have to bring in a crew. So our crew, our team is kind of built on all incoming. Um, so everything's coming into us and then we're facilitating it to the right landlord and the right party within that uh, LLC, let's say, within that business. That's awesome. Um Linda, your background is technology and you've incorporated a ton of technology in what you're up to. So I'd love to dive into that topic because, you know, we all know of technology and the apps and this and that, but I'm sure there's things we're all as landlords and people managing their property, just managing their, their flips, managing their business and real estate yeah. that are missing, right? So there's things we don't know that we don't know. So I, I'd love to hear from you. What have you found to be, you know, the top you know, technology that, that landlords as well as people managing their projects should be using, you know, things that maybe they're not aware of or, you know, they're off the beaten path, you know. Um, so I'd love to dive in that a little bit since you, we have a technical expert on the call. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I absolutely love the topic and I, I, I really love this topic really as it relates to landlords because 
Um, real estate is, you know, I'd say if we take it, it has been slow to adapt. Like I said, 10 years ago, I thought you would be all ACH. Um, I will say the good news is it is all. I'm definitely seeing, I would definitely suggest the Chase Quick Pace. So yes, let's from just a money perspective. But now if we ratchet that up to the software, I would say in the past, the traditional, I'll call it life, of the do-it-yourself landlord or you know, self self-managing landlord is a very busy day. Let's let's face it. You know, I can sit here and talk all about technology, but the reality is they have some long days and they're mobile. They're mo they're mostly mobile. They're mo they're not sitting at a computer in an office. So all these apps are huge. Um, and I would say let if we go through I'll say first of all the top five softwares we run all five of those in our office and that's like rent manager, property wear at Folio, Buildium, Yardi, Cozy. And there, uh, the other day, I don't know if I knew this when I talked to you, Liz, but I was doing a, an article for someone on technology and found 35 different ones. I noticed an email I got the other day. Wow. I had a link to another one. So it's, it's getting to be quite a crowded space. But if we just center on those um, five, I would say they're all really helpful for you. Let's start with the marketing process. Um, the fact that you're able to blast out, you have to take advantage of that. And and here's where I'm a I'm a very realist when it comes to technology. To me, technologies also had also always had to fill a void. Like I was not the geek that just wanted it on my machine for no reason. Like it had to be helping me. And I don't know, is that the woman part of you, the mother part of you? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> right? Because I, I was never a gamer or things that where you just sucks your time, right? <laughs> I, 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 you know, I loved Excel from the minute, you know, I did like data analysis classes, like things that had a reward for why I was doing it. I, I, in fact, I, you two can really appreciate a funny story. Um, I volunteer at school. I had to do the hot dog day. And they, it was throughout, you know, K through eight and, you know, the children would out, order hot dogs and then a drink and I don't know, steak chips, something like that. And I said to them, this belongs in Excel. And they're like, just scratching their heads. Like, are you crazy? Uh, but they have papers like everywhere trying to do the count. And so I throw it in Excel and I'm able to tell them by room, you know, there was different lunch hours. How many we needed of each? They're like, oh my God, that's amazing. Can you teach me how to do that? <laughs> so that's the kind of technology I need. Like, yes, it was going to be time consuming for me to put it in. But now once it was in, it was like, look at, I can analyze this and, you know, how many people are eating hot dogs? How many people are eating yeah. chips? Like we just had so much granular data. And that's I, awesome. Yeah, it's a silly, crazy story, right? But the moms can appreciate it. You're, you're on Jess's uh, hero right now. You do know that, right? I <laughs> <laughs> love spreadsheets and Excel. You know, that's, oh, is this music yes. to your ears, Andressa? <laughs> totally. Yeah. I'm thinking to it. I, I just get a high of it. It's yeah. like crazy. Well, so, so that's the way I'm taking your softwares now. So let's, Andressa, if you like that, think about it in terms of these applications. At a certain point, it's going to be cost effective for them mm -hmm. to use that. Now, I, again, if you have three, do you want to pay for that module? Probably not, right? But once you have that, let's take in all those applications. I'm going to get you, I think, excited again. All those applications, like that's data. Data is truly like gold right now. So even the ones you turn down, they need to be part of your, I'll call it CRM. You, mm -hmm. you don't, and so if you're doing online applications, you're avoiding, I have my keyboard here, you're avoiding in-office staff typing what just came in on paper. So there's a time saver, right? So yes, you might be paying for it, but why should you, even if you're sending it out to them with, a, I'll call it a fillable Adobe, you still then have to get it in your software. So really weigh out what they want to charge you extra for the online applications. Let them come in online if that's cost effective for your site. And then you can get that approval process done and you have more data. So now they, maybe they don't get approved this time, but now if they're on my mailing list, now you should start, let's say, a MailChimp, a free email newsletter of just residents uh, or potential residents for the future. You know, so we combine that with some social media 
and you're building a little bit of a following uh, and you know a well you're you become a well-known let's say housing provider in your community especially, yeah. especially the communities let's say with hospitals or uh, you know colleges and it doesn't have to be the big colleges there's little community like it, it just gains your traction you know absolutely i think that it's all about how how much your time is worth uh at the media atlantic uh summit uh jay scott made a very good point when he ordered it was a i think a pack of screws from home depot and he got it delivered Right, and I was like, "What? What's going on?" He and then he explained behind it what what's the reason for it. It's not worth it my time to go there and get that screw. It's not worth it my um, foreman or or my PM to go there to get those those screws. And it's cheaper for for me to get it delivered, and it will save me time. And that time I could be making much more doing what I'm good at, and then. Therefore, it makes sense, make financial sense as well. It, absolutely. I, I am in so much agreement with that. And I could take apart, like I'll call it the whole um, rent management process, you know, of whatever software, property management process of whatever software. But each of those is doing exactly what you're saying, you know, because now let's say, um, okay, you'll take the online payments. Well, now if you open up the portal, those portals uh, you know, automatically entered in the ledger. So now you're not sitting down. We had a man, a really good story. He was a um, traveling salesman. He let people deposit a lower rent community. He let people deposit right into his bank account. And he always told them to write their name on the thing. And you know how they, they always listen, right? So it's on every single deposit slip. So he couldn't even, he came to us. He's like, I can't even issue a legal notice. Because at the end of the month, until I can sit down and go through my bank account and literally one by one open those images of those deposits because nobody ever, you know, you'll hear those tricks. Oh, make it a dollar a piece. Like, I don't know who's got all these people paying exactly the right amount, but God bless them because uh, we get, you know, a lot of them, they're paying 20 extra, they're paying 20 short. And so he had to open them all. And by that point, like he was seriously into the next month. So, you know, we have them take images. Tenants are really, we're, I would say, exponential growth in how good they are about taking pictures of everything. We won't take a maintenance request now without a picture. If they are on one of our landlords with a self-service deposit, they have got to give us the receipt on that day or the ledger doesn't get updated, which potentially we tell them has, uh, you know, they'll get the late notice and they don't usually like that. So now... They're very proactive. You know, we're flooded with images on the first of the month, you know, or whatever day they pay. Sorry. Linda, what would you say? I think it can be very overwhelming choosing an actual software, you know, and a technology because, it, you know, they all have their pluses and minuses. You work with five of them. When we started, and we had like 10 units at the time, I mean, we went with Rent Manager because that, that was the name of the game 10 years ago or how many years ago. And then over the years, we're like, I think we want to switch. And so we did a lot of research and we ended up going with Appfolio. We still use Appfolio. Um, and, and, you know, we've been pretty happy with it. But it's a little overwhelming choosing the technology for what's right for you because they all want to sell the bells and whistles and they all sound great. So I'm curious to hear from someone who actually works with all of them, which is unique, right? Uh, you, you're not, you know, you're, you're not even selling any of them. You're literally just right. a conduit for all of them. Right. I mean, who better to ask this question? I think, you know, you're the best person to ask it. How does a, how does the landlord determine the right software for them? Uh, they know they need to have something. And even like in our own case, we had rent manager and we knew we just felt like we were outgrowing it a bit and we wanted to move to something else. At that time, we had about we had about 100 units at the time. Really? So that, just to give you a reference point. And so that way, Appfolio made sense for us. But we did a lot of research, or I should say, I did a lot of research. <laughs> um, and, and it was overwhelming, and I didn't want to make the wrong mistake. So how do you, what would you counsel the landlord listening to this uh, to ensure that A, are using the right software from a technology perspective, and B, if they're not, how do they determine the right one for them? Uh, you know what, that's, I'm going to call it, that's a difficult question. It really is. And I'm going to do my best to answer it. But it, I compare it kind of to automobiles. 
that for the most part, with the exception of, you know, let's say a lemon, <laughs> it's going to get you to and from your destination. Okay. And then there's going to be just like, you know, we're going to pick different models based on, you know, I have children, I need a minivan, whatever. You know, I would say it kind of goes like that. Rent manager is really a good one. Um, one of the things I would say that you said that I think is really key, that you sound, I'll say, high energy, ambitious, and the fact that you made that switch with 100 units, it is huge. I mean, it speaks volumes to you because most of our landlords find it very hard to upgrade. So I would say, based on that point, that they need to put a lot of thought. I can't believe you must have had, like, did they help you with that upgrade? They did. Did you, did they you did. pay for it? You paid for it. Okay. I think they, yeah. You know, landlords as a whole are not usually willing to pay for much. So if you if you don't choose wisely, you know, you'll be doing duplicate data entry. They all have that, that feature that you pay for. To, um, I don't know, if, if Andres is into um, Excel spreadsheets, when you really stop and think about it, and I won't start with how to build a wheel, but a database, I mean, a property management software is just a database of all these different tables, and one's on the lease, one's on the people, one's on the home, and you know, on the unit. And so they have to like literally strip down all those to re-enter it into that new software. So my point to that is think wisely. Um, Liz, that, that is great that she made that upgrade, but a lot of people will not upgrade. Maybe you were in it for a long enough time because of the pain involved. So don't jump into something based on a salesman. You know, I would say think about like a folio has um, an accounting uh, feel, I'm sorry, module. And so one of the things I say to people is you have to talk to your accountant. Now, if you're willing to switch accountants, that's fine. But let's just say a lot of accountants like things in an Excel or CSV format. That's an important question for you because that's a guy, guy or girl, that you should have a really strong relationship with. And it's key that they're comfortable with what you pick. It's that's key, great. It's great key key suggestion. That, yeah, you don't run out and buy this, you know, $5,000 car and then you didn't check the garage and you can't get in. The, you know, it doesn't fit in your garage. Uh, I think you'll pay and you'll pay again and you'll pay every year if all of a sudden that person's like, oh, I need this in QuickBooks format. So now you bought this great software and you have to enter it in QuickBooks, which, again, may or may not be the worst thing. That great software does a lot of other things for you. Maybe the accounting module you don't even care about you know, the bill payment, maybe um, like we just talked about, it's a database. It should be like, to me, I can just get so excited. Like you should be keeping track of maintenance, um, serial numbers, paint colors. Like it should be like gold to you. The one spot where you can find anything. And nowadays, of course, I'm going to pick up my cell phone. Nowadays, of course, it, you can enter the app right off of your cell phone. So you have the lease with you. You have... Uh, you know, I, I love that Home Depot story you told. You know, Home Depot is way ahead when it comes to this whole database world and artificial intelligence and the fact that they're allowing you to take pictures of that screw first to find the right screw and then deliver it to you. And then at the end of the year, they give you that massive, uh, Andres, I should be excited, spreadsheet, right? <laughs> that you can, you can sort and you can filter any way you want. And, and to me, it's like, gathering knowledge it's that whole dashboard concept of okay i don't want to just input this because i'm a geek i want to input this so i can make better decisions next year you know and I, absolutely I, I totally agree with you i'm all about creating systems and using whatever is out there i'll test it i'll test it and see if it is worth it for my team if everybody's understanding it's way, a good way to communicate. So that will be my next question for you. I'm all about systems and creating things that can save me time. Are you using right now uh, in your daily basis for your marketing, on your communication, any, any app like Slack, Dropbox, DocuSign to facilitate your daily routines? Yes, absolutely. Let, let's say all of the above. Let's start with, we definitely use DocuSign. If we're looking for tips for your listeners, I would say that's huge. If they, if they don't use DocuSign, any electronic 
signature that they're comfortable with is fine with me, but that saves a lot of back and forth um, from the lease signing right through to the renewals. We use it, I think it's a big tip, but we use it for anything like some of our landlords have single family homes and the bill has to, the utility bill has to go out to the tenant to pay and we used to mail those. Uh, we send them via DocuSign now and that because then we have proof that they opened it and that any communication or questions. That's a great suggestion. I don't think we're doing that. I, it really saves money. Sorry, I'm taking time. notes. Yeah, that's a good one. I, we love that. We even do that with like man, um, mandatory inspections now. You, you know, when you get this, uh, a lot of these different cities, municipalities mm -hmm. are having... So now the inspection, we just put initials next to the date and time, you know, because usually that letter comes to us from the landlord. So all we have to do is DocuSign it right out to the tenant. And then we, of course, document it on the account. Um, and those are the kind of things I think you should do. But again, we have, that's our job. We're on the back office doing everything. But if you just get it out via DocuSign, let's go through a couple others. Dropbox, absolutely, of course. And again, I'm not one to necessarily pick the vendor. There's alternatives, right? Sure. There's the Google Drive, whatever it is. The point is you're a landlord, you're on the move, you're on the go. You have to be able to find that document no matter where you are. You can't be tied to the you know, the old hard drive. Um, which other ones did you say? Team communication. That's one I'm going to say I think that's going to take off. I think Slack and them are just, I'll call it a drop in the bucket. I do believe like kind of the old way of us emailing things is going to just naturally trend. I don't know exactly what that will look like, but I think those group applications are going to become bigger in all of our lives, not just landlords. Got it. And one more question. I want, I'm curious to hear your opinion about Google Assistant. Google recently launched uh, what they call Google Assistant, uh, which is a virtual assistant that can make call, make payments, schedule appointments for you virtually. And they, they launched a couple of days ago. Okay, I, I, we received an email notice, but we have not used it. But I do, I will say my research has been on the, um, the voice activation, and, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to be huge. One of the things, I'll give you this to go with that, because I think, like, from my world, it's something we're watching closely, is um, kind of, I have these ad phones on today, and so the thought is, that the AI, remember, it's just listening, right? It's building a database. We'll listen to all these, let's call them call centers, which ours isn't, you know, what I would consider that. But yet, yes, we get a lot of calls. And it will listen to the tone of those conversations and be able to offer you advice, like, in real time. Of, you know, and, and that's something we talk about here all the time, like, because we collaborate together. Like, in, in fact, um, kind of, uh, our homework sheet recently, <laughs> like to have everybody put kind of 10 most common phrases so that when we're doing training, we make sure that those are covered. And so those would be coming right through here. We wouldn't have to help a new person. It would automatically. So I think that's cool. I do think a lot's going to happen. You know, the bigger communities, I, um, I'm going to, and I think this is on the order of what you're saying with Google Assistant, is the bigger communities already have like the voice activated apps that are on like the Google home mm -hmm. and yes. they can make their pay their rent payments. So just the way, you know, uh, web developers or developer te teams made the apps for the phone. They're now making the apps for those, you know, sound. Yeah. So that's like, I don't know, that's a whole new world coming. Yeah. Uh, you know, on that note too, Linda, you know, you're, you're a technology person. So you get this stuff. I don't know about you, but, um, I, you know, I didn't even think about using TocuSign for like our utility bills or, or, you know, so point being is that you have existing landlords and folks in this business that, you know, it's really hard to stay up on every new usage of tools that you're using. And then beyond that, utilize new tools. You know, when, when I started working with Andressa, her, you know, before we started this podcast and all that, Andressa, our two companies partnered together on various projects. And she goes, you haven't logged into to Slack yet. And I'm like, I don't even know the value of Slack, you know? And I'm like, okay, I trust you. I trust you. I start, no, I love it. You know, now I, you know, yesterday I'm like, I didn't see a Slack update on something, you know? So my point is that she's, she's been so 
helpful to show, show me things that, you know, we didn't know. But my question to you is how do I, or anyone listening to this, stay up on the new usage of current apps and things that we're u- using? Because I'm sure Dropbox, I could be doing other things. More importantly, how do I stay up on all the new things happening and all the new, new technology coming out? How do I assess that quickly? It's overwhelming, quite honestly. So sometimes I get to the point where like, I don't want to do it and eh, I'm not even going to go there. But that's not, that's not right. I need to be open to these new things. So how do I assess that? How does someone using these things assess like new apps or new technology? Is there, is there a good newsletter? Is there, is there an app for that? I don't know. Right, so, right. I, I guess it could be overwhelming in this tech, in this day and age. So I'm just curious what your suggestions are for investors listening to this, that they can stay up, you know, up, uh, you know, up to date to what's happening out there in terms of technology. Well, I, you know what, Liz, I'm going to say you've identified probably what I think is common right now, at least from what I'm seeing, because we work nationwide and these think reality conferences. I don't think there's a big provider of that kind of information just the way you're so I mean I can recommend I'll call it little things like set up some Google searches specifically for property management a a core idea uh, yes and um, and for technology like property management Mm -hmm. technology um, going you're talking about Google alerts correct yes I'm sorry I said search alert yes thank you okay and and good idea that's you know but Here's what I would say, and and honestly, I am that balanced person. I'm out there because, I'll call it, it's my first primary, let's call it, source of income, right, to know about that. But you don't, I kind of laugh sometimes when I see the landlord that has all that, but they're not collecting their rent. You know what I mean? Like That's true. Mm -hmm. So don't beat yourself up. I think at the end of the day, you need your, your business to be successful. Um, you need to, as you talked about this morning, you try to read a certain portion each day. I'd say that's the way I'd make it part of your day, even if it's part of your month, that you commit to once a month I'm going to read. One of the other places we find is very helpful is we're in some of the larger multifamily newsletters. Those are very helpful because remember, they're probably a year ahead of us. So for instance, in my area, that's CAA, Chicago Apartment Association. And then there's the National Apartment Association. Great suggestion. There's like National NARPM, right? Am I saying that right? National Association of Property Managers. Like they're the ones that are going to be coming out. Yeah. Even your software, like pay attention. Now, this is funny because you probably don't go to it, but I'll go to Epolio's webinars whenever I get those emails. Mm -hmm. Because remember, they have, I'll call it the pocketbook behind them to be watching for these advancements. It's a great suggestion too. Yeah, yeah, they have like, so they're on top of it. In fact, they have a webinar I signed up for today at Folio. Um, because I think like all this voice activated that Andresa asked about, I think you'll see that play out with them adopting it. We see um, one of the coolest things I think, and again, I'm really a tech person on this, so I'm, I'm thinking more behind the scenes. I think the average user probably doesn't realize how cool it is. And dress them might appreciate this. Yeah. So we see that feature in, and I think Epolio has it, but I know for sure rent manager has it, where I would, they were talking about how you can take, let's say, your whole spreadsheet. I'm going to call it that for, for the sake of everybody visualizing yes. it. But your whole um, database of tenants, you go ahead and send out a blast via text to say, you know, it's the first of the month, just a reminder, your rent is due. Anybody that replies, it automatically logs into their note section, you know, the way we're manually recording all that. And so what's very cool about that, that's a mail merge that went out to all the people, and then it's taking the individual replies and documenting them individually to the right person. Like, that is very wow. cool. Yeah, that's, like, very powerful. That's very awesome. super powerful. Now, it's an app that's attached to Rent Manager, or it, that's... Exactly. It's, okay. it's, not, it's um, not an app, but what they do is charge you more for that, because that's like an add-on or module. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm 90% sure that Appfolio has that, too. But, again, those are all extra fees. So, based on your portfolio size, it may or may not be cost-effective. You have to look at that. But you're raising a great point, Linda, and it's becoming helpful for even just myself in that 
where, like, so if you're a landlord, where are the asset classes that, where are they getting together? Where are these national conferences, whether it's single family, whether it's multifamily. So figure out who those leaders are in your particular asset class. Cause maybe it's single families, maybe it's, multifamily, maybe it's a mix of both, but then where are those conferences or who are those groups and then start getting involved in their, on their newsletter list. So that's a great recommendation because they're, they're getting paid to do that, right? They're getting, yeah. it's, it's in their best interest. So why do you have to reinvent the wheel? And I think that's a very creative way. I mean, after our, after our interview, I'm like, I got to get on these newsletters. I got to get, you know, just to be more aware of what's happening. Right. And because remember, their pockets are going to be so much deeper than yours. And Absolutely. you're not going to necessarily want to integrate each change. And, and it may or may not want you to switch softwares. But I'd say, again, when, um, let's say, I'm trying to think of the, the thing I'm thinking about. This goes back like five years ago with... Uh, automobiles, let's say a Mercedes comes up with the screen that when you put it in reverse, you could see behind you. And then all of a sudden Ford had it and a voice activated through your phone. So everybody usually gets it, you know, so yep. you're just watching for what's going to come along. And right now they're, they're truly the big five, but again, there's 30 out there that I'm sure want to be the next, you know, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates and yeah, yeah. The Amazon leaders, right? Well, Linda, we, we, um, Need to have you back on because I probably have like seven more questions. Same with you, Andressa, right? Yes. <laughs> so we really appreciate uh, all the great insights so far. Before before we transition to our fabulous three, we need to like get some some music do, 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 or something. But um, what you know, where can people learn more about your business? What you're up to? Because you do a lot of education out there in sh the Chicago area. So where where would people learn more about you? Sure. Um, we have a couple websites. I would say we're, um, well, why don't we start with YouTube? So we're on youtube.com slash securepay1. We have over 500 daily videos um, from our team with um, one minute tips. They're all one minute. So that's been an incredible uh, journey, I'll say. And we try to do months on just technology. In fact, June is all about um, social media and YouTube and social platforms for the landlord, you know, tips on that. Um, we, you can also, let's see, LinkedIn, Linda Liberatore, L-I-B-E-R-A-T-O-R-E. -E. Uh, we have a free strategy session. I'd be happy to offer that to any of your listeners. That's at mylandlordhelper.com slash free. And um, our phone number, 847-431-3300. <laughs> If anybody needs help and we are looking to we have been talking like at think realty uh, we just had like you said the one in Chicago uh, we go to different states all the time uh, Ohio we're heading there and we try to focus in on technology and how we can help people with that perfect and all this information and all the softwares that Linda uh, mentioned is gonna be on our show notes so you can check everything there uh, so let's get into our fabulous three questions, Linda. The first one will be, what's the most transformational book you have ever read? Um, well, I'm going to go with um, Hal, Elrod, Hal Elrod, The Miracle Morning. I, I really think that kind of sets the day. I just live by that, and I really like that. And I kind of was living it a little bit, but that just really made it. So it's been like, I'd say almost four years now. It's a great book. Yes, it is. Um, second question is, what's the most powerful routine you do to create a financially free and balanced life? Uh, most definitely is, I think, I, if you're saying the routine. Yes. Um, it's kind of the, uh, the investing, of course, the real estate investing. Um, I believe in the health as well. Um, so I think that ties back to health like just making sure you're exercising, you're eating right. And, you know, we all slip, but making daily commitments to the mind and all that, I think really helps. Beautiful. And the last question is, which woman, famous or not, has inspired you the most? Oh, wow. Which woman? Yes. I'm going to go with just, I, I, off the top of my head, I'm going to say Sonia Booker. How's that? She is another Think Realty coach with me. She's coming out tomorrow, I believe. Um, she's out of Georgia. She'd make a great interview. And she, um, she just, she really is inspirational to her community, to so many investors. So I'll go with her. Great. Awesome. 
Linda, you've been um, such a bre- you know breath of knowledge, and we really appreciate your time and expertise and generosity of, of all the information you've shared. So thanks for uh, being here with us. I, I really thank you. You're providing such a powerful service, and you're wonderful to talk to and easy to talk to, so you're doing a great job. Thank you so much, Linda. I have I need to get all the notes now into practice. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so again. much. Thank you again, right. Linda. Sure. Bye bye. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There, you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community, and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.